some way, you know, nature always preserves that one little thing to manifest again, to continue that procession, that chronology. I am black. I have nature will preserve that blackness, whether Sebi wanted or not, because Sebi didn't want to be a healer. Sebi was too nice and quietly smoking his cocaine and snorting it. You know, yes, he was in Los Angeles. And I didn't heal him what? Who? I mean, I want to be John Coltrane. I want a flute and I want a soprano. Couldn't blow a note, but I want to be John Coltrane. I want to be Coltrane. I love Coltrane. And I tried like my endeavor best, and I even had the opportunity to meet Coltrane many, many times. What? I didn't become a musician, but I fought like hell to be a musician. And I fought against being a healer. I put up a good fight, but I lost. Here I am standing in front of you now, talking about biochemistry. Now, in order for us to heal the body, I learned that you have to cleanse the body. And you have to feed the body those minerals that are made up, that makes up the body. That's all. Cleanse the body and feed the body the minerals that it's made up of. Calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, iron, and all the others. And then, you'll find that a miracle happened. That's what they tell us, a miracle. Like, Mildred Jones. Mildred Jones came to see us just two months ago, and she was in a breathing machine for eight years with a long plastic cord. And she sat down at 12.30, I remember, because Artie was visiting me and said, ha, 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 you do that. <laughs> I said, sit down and be quiet. And I asked the lady, I said, do you uh, swallow? She said, yes, I could swallow. So I gave her a big glass, just like this. And many of you here knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The product since Mildred Joan has been titled and named the Mostis. You know, like a little boy said the most? Mm -hmm. But it's so, <clears throat> so good. He said, it's the Mostis. <laughs> well, that's what my son called it, the Mostis. So I named it the Mostis. So I gave this lady some of the Mostis. <laughs> At 12.30, at 12.35, she relaxed. At 12.45, she took the oxygen out of her nose. At 1 o'clock, she was snoring. <laughs> this, am I a voodoo man? <laughs> am I a scientist? No, I just took some herbs that came from the same environment that, came, that the black man came from. The tropics, remember our electrical energy is higher than anyone else on the planet because it's different. That's why we have so much carbon. You see, to make electricity, and let me say this, it's very simple. I don't want y'all to think that these things are so impossible because I, who didn't go to school, could see them and work with them as a steam engineer on the ships. I saw these things. To create electricity, all you need is what? Carbon and copper. A copper weave spinning and carbon rubbing against it, and it creates a resonance that produces electricity. That's all it is. The more copper or the more carbon, the higher the amount of electricity. And look at us. We're nothing but that. So when we use herbs from the temperate region, such as burdock, we're not getting, it does not get enough sunlight. It doesn't have enough energy. So we go to the tropics and get the herbs that are grown in the tropics. That grow in the tropics. And you find that voila, Mildred Joan was sleeping at one o'clock. Miss <laughs> Yasin Nader, Yasin Nader from Philadelphia called us Sunday before last because her son is in a coma with epilepsy and he had a tube in the stone. A coma for two years. Gave him the stuff, but when I walked in the door, I saw death. I said, oh no, this boy's dead. But the voice inside said, shut up. I look at my daughter, I say, we why, you think there's life in this boy? She said, mm-mm. <laughs> but the boy said, shut up, and give the stuff to the woman. Then the woman came out, the woman said, do you think he's going to live? I lied. I said, yes, he's going to live. That was not what I was feeling. And she put the stuff in the bag, and the stuff went straight into his stomach. She called two days later, he's up and talking. Oh. I'm out. Now we come to AIDS. I didn't know I could cure AIDS. How would I know that? I don't diagnose anyone. 
I don't take, have laboratories to break down germs, bacteria, or virus. I don't do that. I just happen to be in Washington giving these people compounds that were curing all leukemia, uh, sickle cell, which is Aquila Stroud. And a young lady said, Zelma Peterson called me and said, Dr. Sevi, I know you have cured many diseases that I could have had. This is why I wrote an article about you in the Financial Independence magazine. But I learned that my brother-in-law brother has AIDS. But he's at the most sister stage. You think it's too late? I said, don't do that. I said, fly to New York and go see Annette. Annette is in the building now with that pink dress, that flower dress over there that you always see. Annette, come for please. This is Annette. Annette also cures and any other disease. See, I'm just talking because they're scared to talk to you. You see, I'm a little bit bolder than them, but they know more than I do. So Annette gave her the compound. She goes to Boston that Saturday, gave the boy the stuff. That Sunday, no more sisters was gone. Two months later, the doctor said he didn't have AIDS, that he was misdiagnosed. <laughs> We cleansed the mucus from his lungs. We cleansed the mucus from his bronchial tubes. Every disease, you could attest to that. Every time you're sick, you have a lot of mucus coming out of you. Sure, because you ate something that brought the mucus. You ate something that we were programmed to eat in the 400 years away from our mama. That's all disease is. It's not time to criticize the Usha Institute as WLIB. Well, when they go up there and ask them to uh, see if I could talk on the radio program, they said, have they released him yet? <laughs> it, it will be a cold day in hell when I lecture on the LIB again. Right. Never again. You see, because that was insulting their mother. And I have very little to do with people that does the, those kinds of things, conscious or unconsciously. <laughs> so hey, my, this man is pure of AIDS. So again, we go back. We gave him substance to cleanse. That is potassium chloride. Potassium chloride, dibasic, meaning made by nature. Not mono. Mono is made by man. Anybody here who's a chemist will know that. Am I right? Yes. Sure I'm right. So we go to the plants and find the chemicals that will cleanse away the mucus as fast as possible, as quick as possible. And then we find other herbs that has phosphates to build the system to give you energy while you undergo this disease state and then the cells grow back whether in the liver whether in the lungs whether anywhere in the body so that's all we do is to cleanse the system and to allow the system to be rebuilt but in the allopathic philosophy which is the European medicine it is to do what make pills out of inorganic substance and give you but the cause of disease is still in you So you see, it's not that difficult, but it is, it is difficult for them. And now it makes it even more difficult because the whole society, the whole American government depends on those chemical laboratories for huge amount of money. Right. And a black people is going to come and invent medicine from herbs, deprive them of all those billions. Now you know it takes more than a nerve to stand <laughs> up against a crime. I take such a position, but it is necessary. Because my life was a stake. Remember, I was impotent. I was diabetic. I was asthmatic. I was hypotensive, and I was obese. I went to all the doctors. Now, what happened? He was a book reader. That's what happened. He read books. <laughs> See, life doesn't come out of a book. A book is a violation of life. Just to create a book, you have to cut trees down. There's a violation. All right. <laughs> have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. If Sebi, who was arrested a day before I'm supposed to testify in the course of the United States, downtown Brooklyn, Supreme Court, the attorney general sent a message to me and said, if I take a misdemeanor, that he would drop all charges. <laughs> what was he saying to you? <laughs> Not to me, but to you. He didn't give a damn about you. That's right. That's right. That's right. If I had done that, you wouldn't hear my mouth today. I said, no, this is Mr. Cup, uh, win, win or lose. Because my 
people of our state, my race, my step, my being, my family. And I'm 